you know, um, we say every day in the Shon Esrei, Zoche Chas De Yavos, we say Elokei Avrom, Elokei Yitzchel, Elokei Yaakov, and then we say Zoche Chas De Yavos. Hashem remembers the the Chesed, the good deeds of the Yavos, and we, their descendants, were always drawing on their on their merits. And therefore, existence continues because it's worthwhile to maintain existence for the sake of giving us choices because we have chaz the avos. In the merit of the avos, Hashem is willing to give us every chance to always be in the context of choice that our actions should have value. What happens when all the merits of the avos are depleted? Or maybe goel of nevenehim. Laman shomo Then he brings the goel when we've exhausted all the merits of the Ovos and we're not worthy any longer, it's not worthwhile to keep the world going, then he's maybe go live naive name. He brings the goel. But everything rests on Chaz de Ovos. We find that regarding Karbanos, the only three species which qualifies as a carbon, which is the basis for atonement, kapora, which is midis arachmin, is three species. It's shur kesveiski voli, the ox, the sheep, and the goat. And the Medjus says, why these three species? Because we find these three species in regard to the other second ocean. Avram, when he hosted the angels, El Aboka Rots Avram, that's the shore. Kesev is the is the Akeda, that's the Ayo. And the A's is Yaakov, when he went to receive the Brochos from his father, his mother says, Take Shnei Gdoy Izin, take two goats from the flock, I'll make delicacies for your father. And he, they use the hides of the Goats to put on Yaakov's arms on his chest. So when Yitzchak touches him and he feels him, he believes it's Esau because he was hairy. So the basis for Kapora, that these three three species were chosen, no, no, none others, was because of the Ovisakadoshim. Everything goes back to the Ovisakadoshim. Over here, we speak in this parsha, of Tishmun, that if you Observe even the mitzvahs. The mitzvahs that are neglected, you will merit the ultimate level. Hashem will have pulled the bris, the chesed, and as is delineated here, God will love you, he will bless you, he will increase you, he will bless you, the fruit of your womb, your flocks, your herds, so on and so forth. So here the Balaturim says, Hashem will love you, b'schus avroham, Shenemar bo zer avram oavi. This is in the source of Avram. Because we refer to zer avram oavi. You are the progeny of Avram, the one who I loved. Ube rachacho. Hashem says, I will bless you. Beschus Yitzchok. Shenemar bo veyivorech elukim es Yitzchok. This is when he was in, went to, to Plishkin, to Avimelech. This is after Avram Avinu passed away. Ve'er becho, b'schus Yaakov, shenem abo, prayer of He said to Yaakov, you should be fruitful and increase in number. Ubeirach. Okay. So again, so we see over here that even if you do the right thing, doing the right thing is not enough. It's only because we have merit. Because we have merit of the three ovos, so the three expressions used here, he will love you, he will bless you, he will increase your number, it's all that's based, the foundation is Avram Tzorin Yaakov. The Gemara tells us, the Rambam rules this way, that a non-Jew keeps the Shev Mitzvah Noach, he's classified as Chassidi Umas Olam, he's from the righteous Gentiles. And the Rambam explains exactly what it means to observe the Shemitz Bnei Noach. And he has a share in the world to come. 
But the share he has in the world to come is not the share that the Jew has in the world to come. It's a different share in the world to come. The share we have in the world to come, we have a direct relation with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We cleave directly to him. The non-Jew, he has relevance, but he doesn't have that intimate relation with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why? Because he has a different dimension of neshama. The neshama of the Jew reflects everything, re reflects every aspect of Torah. The non-Jew doesn't have Torah. The Shem Mitzvah Noach means the neshama that he was given, as we explained, the name of Aral, hasn't been compromised. Since he didn't cross the lines of the Shem Mitzvah Noach, the neshama he was given, he's returning that neshama intact. The neshama of a Jew, as we spoke, we have 248 mitzvahs I say. The neshama is not only intact, but it's advanced. And because it's advanced, it achieves a level of shleimus. That the shleimus is attributed to ourselves, because that was due to our choices, we advanced the dimension of the neshama. Therefore, we achieve shleimus. Hashem is shleimus. Therefore, we have the context, we have the commonality to cleave to him. The Nanju doesn't have it. So it's a different, a different relationship in the world to come. But again, but he's doing, he's righteous, he's this, he's that, doesn't make a difference. The Ovasa Kadoshim, Avram Mitzvah and Yaakov, since they developed and inculcated in their own neshamas a potential that when the descendants stand at Sinai and they're going to be offered the Torah, they're going to, and we went through, as we read the Parsha last week, we went through Egypt, that was Kora Barzo, that was the smelter. All the levels of impurity, all the impediments, that were needed, that prevented us from advancing, were actually, were expunged from us in, 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 in Egypt. That was Golis Mitzrayim. And we were ready for real time, 50 days later, to stand to receive the Torah. But all that was based upon what? That was based upon Sosovos. That was Abram Yitzchak Yaakov. So here also, even though, for Yekiv Tishmon, it's only why, Ahevcho, Veiracho, Veirbecho, that's only because, It'll lose every one of those levels of relationship is directly traced back to Abraham Tzorin Yaakov. If you take a look in the Balaturim regarding Birchus Kohanim, Yivarech Hashem Yishmerecho, Yor Hashem Ponav Yilech Neko, Yus Hashem Ponav Yilech Bi, Yosem Lecho Shalom, the three Birchus Kohanim also, the words over there, each one alludes to Abraham Tzorin Yaakov. That's the reason why we merit the three Birchus Kohanim at the three levels, we receive that, th those blessings. Everything goes back to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. The man in the desert, the Ane Yaakovot, the, the bear, it all goes back to, to Avram. That was the hospitality. We couldn't have survived the Midbar unless it's traced back to Avram. So we had the man, the bear, and the Ane Yaakovot, which was this spiritual cocoon for 40 years, which allowed us to be able to maintain ourselves till we're ready to go to go into into Canaan for that reason. So everything is what is Chazdei Avos. Everything is what the Avos Hakadoshim, what they established, founded, and created potential for the future. That that we have the language, we're able to have an audience with Hashem. Avram Tikin Shachris, Yitzchok Tikin Mincha, Yaakov Tikin Harvis. Every one of the you should serve God with all your hearts, is Tvilo. That that we're able to have an audience, to take three steps forward, and Hashem is, allows us to have that audience with Him, it's in the schus of Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. Without them, we wouldn't be admitted into that audience. It's only because of them. The most perfect family that exists in the history of Klaus was Yaakov and his children. Right? They refer to Shifte Koch. They are the tribes of Hashem. So why didn't Hashem give the Torah to Yaakov and his children? And Yaakov is Yaakov Ishtam Yoshev Olim. He personified Torah. So Rabbeinu Bachir says it and others say it because there was a critical mass of people that you needed for Kabbalah's Torah, which was 600,000 males above the age of 20. And that didn't exist because that's Klal Yisrael. That number, that maximizes six Six directions, thousand, that's the that's the number, that's the ultimate number. Within that context, Hashem gives the Torah. 
Hashem doesn't give a Torah to a family. He gives it to a people which encompass, which represent all existence. So because Yaakov didn't have that number, that critical mass of 600,000 males, that's why Yaakov's family did not receive the Torah for that reason. Only when we left Egypt do we have, and the Torah makes it a point, there were 600,000 men above the age of 20. Therefore, they left Egypt to receive the Torah at Sinai. Meaning, you're not there yet. But due to what they did, in terms of what they created, and their, their value and their worthiness, the descendants have, have received it. No concept of schus ovos, right? We have schus ovos. We had mentioned, and I once mentioned Amen Sifarno, and at the end of Dvorim, Moshe Rabbeinu says in Hazinu, Chevel Nachloso. We are the Chevel of the Nachlo, of Yaakov. So he explains what's a Chevel. A Chevel is a rope. A rope is a continuum, it extends itself. He says, you find by non-Jews, you find Sadiqim, Hasidim sold them. But you don't find it, it repeats itself. By Klal Yisrael, although it may skip a generation, but there's always the Skosovos, it carry, continues to carry over. We are Chevon Nachloso. The Skos carries on from generation to generation. By the non-Jew, each person is an individual unto himself. It does not carry over. It's a whole different reality. So the schus ovos, what the everything is schus ovos. It's a continuum. We are a continuum of of, the, of of what they are. They are the foundation. We're the structure on that foundation. When you say in your hearts, Rabbi Magoyim Ma'ele Mi Many. These nations are many more than we are, more numerous than we are. How are we able to conquer them? You should not be fearful of them. He says, You should remember and read it. It doesn't say Zohar. Zohar Tiskor. Remember and reiter reiterates this point. Again, not what you did to Egypt, what Hashem Elokecho. Because Hashem is Elokecho, what he did to Paro, Lucham Mitzrayim. To Paro and all of Egypt. Kisomel Vavcha Rashi. Means maybe you will say why? What did Hashem do to power in Egypt? Hamasus Hagdolos Ashurai Necho. Rashi says, What's Masos Nisionos? The challenges. Osus Vamosin, Osus Gon, Vayin Nochosh. How did Moshe prove? That he was what? That he was God's agent? He took the staff and turned to a snake. The blood turned, the water turned to blood. Hamovsin. What Hamovsin? Hamakos and Muflos. It was the plagues which were Muflos, which were supernatural, out of the ordinary. Ayora Chazoko, Hazura Antuyo. Yat Chazoka, we say this in the and the Agon is Adever, that was the pestilence. Hazor Tuyo, Zuacheref, Shamax Bachoros. Hashem Tsiach Hashem Elokecho, through all that Hashem took you out. Kenyas Hashem Elokecho, Lucholo Amim. Hashem will do such to all the nations. Hashem Toyorib if name, that you're fearful of them. Therefore, don't be fearful. Because now, until now, you have a, a reason to be fearful. But now that you're ready to enter and you're ready to conquer, it's like we find that after the Miraglim, there was a certain segment of Paul said we're going. So Moshe said to them, 
don't it's don't go. Hashem is no longer in your midst. You'll be destroyed. And they went and they were destroyed. Meaning, you're only meant to go in and not to be fearful when Hashem says it's ready to go in. Otherwise, you have what to be afraid of. Because without Hashem's intervention, you're definitely going to fail. So here it says, All the nations that you're afraid of. Because unless Hashem intervenes, you have what to be fearful. They will destroy you. It's only because Hashem's intervention, as when it was time to leave Egypt, we this, Egypt was destroyed. It's Hashem Elokecha. Here also, Kenyas Hashem Elokecha Cholamim. Hashem will do the same to all the nations, which you're fearful until now. But see, that, that was part of the problem. Because there was this original fear, understanding, you can't do it. Now Hashem says, now we're going to do it. But if we, until now we could, why? How can we do it all of a sudden now? So he says, if you remember what happened in Egypt, until it was time to leave, you were locked in there. There was no way that you could escape Egypt. When Hashem says it's time to leave, it was a ten month process. The Makos were over a ten month period. After ten months, it was time for what? For Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we left. Not only was one person able to escape Egypt, the whole nation left. Identically now. Until now, you have what to be afraid of. But that's that's the challenge. Do you have that emuna and the tochum and trust, the belief and the trust in Hashem that although there's what to be afraid of, because conventionally you cannot defeat these people. But now that Hashem is intervening, so you have to have that level of faith and belief that Hashem will intervene and bring it about. It's a certain flying insect. Hashem will send to them until those that are left and those that are in hiding, they will be destroyed through this flying insect. So we'll see what is this tzira? I mean, it's a certain type of flying creature. It actually would spurt a level of venom and this will destroy them. And would actually blind them wherever they were in hiding. They would be in hiding, in ambush. This insect would fly and it would inject them with this venom. They become blind and through that they would actually become totally incapacitated. So you have nothing to worry about. You know, the Ramchal says something interesting. You know, twice a day we have an obligation to remember Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. During the daytime, during, therefore we say the third paragraph of the Shema. The reason why we say the third paragraph of the Shema because contained in there is Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. We mentioned Shem took us out of Egypt. Now, when we were in Egypt, the Jews themselves were totally spiritually shut down we speak about, we say in the Ezra's, we speak about Gula, the two expressions, Gula and Pidion, redemption. They both mean redemption, but it's a different word. We say Goel Yisrael, Gula. Mitzrayim Gyaltonu, Mitzrayim Pidisonu, Pidion. There was a Pidion. What's the difference? So the way it's explained, Two things happened when we left Egypt. There was a spiritual redemption and there was a first physical redemption. We were slaves. We couldn't leave Egypt physically. We were, we were confined there. We were in, equivalent of an incarceration. But in addition, when we were in Egypt, because we were under the influence of the Memtesh Tuma, the 49th level of spiritual contamination, our souls were shut down. We were blocked. Only when Hashem took us out of Egypt... Then we began the ascent to the Memtes Shari Taro. I was sent to, to Kedusha. That began when we left Egypt. So one is a physical redemption and one is a spiritual redemption. That's what it is. So he writes, the Ramchal writes, 
what we mentioned, you teach Mishraim every day in the Kriya Shema, twice a day, and you have a mind to fulfill the mitzvah, you teach Mishraim. When you have that, it minimizes the influence of the Yitzhara, of the evil inclination over us. The evil inclination's grasp, grip, grip over us is weakened. And you have a greater degree of freedom, that choices become easier. This is the Ramchal writes in the Das Tfunos. Writes it in, in the Derech Hashem also. The Derech Hashem. You hear this? And you have a mind when you say, when you say those words, as you say those words, that weakens the grip of the evil inclination that he has over us, his influence over us. Just as when we left Egypt, his that hold was, was weakened, was lessened. We still had Yetzirah, we still had an evil inclination. But we weren't totally shut down as we were in Egypt. Identically, when we say it twice day, every day, it has a, a semblance of that effect. And therefore, we're in a better place in terms of making ease, make, cho making choices easier to contend with all these, the challenges of life. And Moshe shared with, it says, what did Yisro hear? That Hashem had taken us out of Egypt. But over there it says, Paro and Mitzrayim. So Rashi over there cites that the Mechilto, Paro was Melech Kosher, was a very difficult king. Mitzrayim, Uma Kosher, was a very difficult people. What are we talking about? It's terms in terms of what, what the level of representation was. And we said, you see some shrine when he says, Hashem took us out of Egypt. And Rashi says, Zeg Dola al Kulam, taking us out of Egypt was greater than all the miracles. He explained to he explained to him all the ten plagues, whatever it is. And Kriyas Yamsuf, but he says the greatest of all the miracles was he took us out of Egypt. So we asked that. The person is in the prison. And you kill the warden and all the prison guards and you destroy the walls of the prison. Leaving leaving the prison. Is that a miracle? I mean, there's no there's, there's nothing re re restraining you, holding you back. You just walk out. The answer is, we're not talking about the physical redemption. The spiritual redemption. Yisrael was one of the advisors to Paro. He had an understanding of what that impurity was. A person who has more foreign substance in his, in his blood than blood could you actually detox that person? It's not possible. We were so spiritually shut down. And all of a sudden now, we're at Kriyas Yamsev. We said, Hashem Yimoch And we're fully functional, spiritually speaking. That, that's what he was amazed. He was amazed at the spiritual redemption. That what, despite our experience of Egypt, and we reached the 49th level of impurity, we're able to be extricated from that and be at a level now that we're almost ready for real time, for Kabbal Satora. That's what he was amazed. So the way they explained Mitzrayim Yaltono from Egypt, which they had the representation of the ultimate level of impurity, we were what? We were redeemed. Gula. And Beis Avodim, the house of bondage, bondage is the physical, we were redeemed. We were able to, to leave there. If I recall Amen. correct, that's the way the Briskarov Explains the ghoul is the spiritual and pigeon is the is the physical. Maybe I, I know I've asked this question before. What is it about sinking to the 49th level of Tuma that serves as the at the same time the expungement of whatever it was that we needed to have expunged as a people? I don't understand how the sinking to the 49th yeah, level. It's, it's, a good, it's a very good question. I mean, we went to Egypt because Avram had asked an inappropriate question. And somehow we're put in, and we refer in last week's Parsha as this process as Kura Barzil. It was the smelter. As the smelter extracts the impurity from the, the, from the metal, the Egyptian experience expunged whatever had to be expunged. But yet, when we left Egypt, we're at the, the lowest level. We're at the point of spiritual extinction. I mean, how, how does it some? How does it jive, right? I mean, that, that's the question you're asking.
Avram's question was inappropriate. We had asked, we, we have a principle that the children do not pay for the sins of the fall of the father. Um, if Avram fails, why do we have to be the ones to, to pay his 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 whatever's his his dues? So we explained that Avram Avinu is the founding father of Klal Yisrael. And any deficiency within his own spirituality would manifest itself in us. So that deficiency had to be corrected. Whatever that, that failing was, even though we may fall to the Memtesh Ari Tumah, it doesn't make a difference. And we explained really based I, on the principle of the, of the Ramchal, what is creation? Creation is ex nihilo. It's yesh mi'ayin. And the Ramchal says, it's very interesting. Everything is a yesh mi'ayin. You plant the seed. What, what's the, grow, the growth process? The seed, what's germination? The seed germinates. It rots to a point that it seems to be it's deteriorated to go out of existence. All of a sudden, it starts sprouting. It's non-existence, then becomes existence. That's what it is. The Gemara says that the egg, a fertilized egg, that before, when, it, when, it's, when it's fertilized, it has to deteriorate to be to go to almost to be dirt. Inedible at the most extreme level of in, 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 inedibility, and then all of a sudden life comes to that, that embryo, so to say, and starts developing as a chick. Everything goes back to the zero and then comes back again. Tchias Mason, what's Tchias Mason? Resurrection. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin that even Moshe Rabbeinu, everything right before Tchias Mason reverts back to dust and then is resurrected. Everything is like on the ex nihilo uh, profile. Goes to, z to nothing, then comes into being. We had to sink to a level of no return, literally almost that level, although it was due to our choice, but that was the predicament. And then all of a sudden from that sprouts, the process of ascent 49 levels to reach the 50th level, which was the day that the Torah was given to us. So it's two separate things. There was an impediment. It's what, what does a person have to turn to dust? We had explained in the second bracha of the, of the Shimon Esrei, we say, Melech Memisu Mechaya. The king, he causes death, he kills, and then brings life. So the Ramchal writes, not, not regarding that particular concept, why can't man live forever? Why does a person have to die? Why was, after eating of the Eitz Adas, why was death pronounced on mankind? So he explains that because evil became integrated in the being of the human being, Hashem has no relevance to evil. The whole objective is to, cle to cleave to Hashem totally. But if the physicality of the human being is inter integrated with evil, Hashem can't have rel a relationship with that. Therefore, what has to, has to happen? The person dies. He decomposes. And what's resurrect resurrected is only the pure matter. The evil remains in the ground. So ultimately... When the soul is reunited with the body, that body is a pure body, as that body was pre-sin of Adam. And together, it cleaves to Hashem. So everything reverts back to dust. Even Moshe Rabbeinu, before it, Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be resurrected. Well, Moshe Rabbeinu right now is not alive. He'll be resurrected. In, in the grave, at this moment, he's still intact, fully vibrant. As it says, the Torah attests to what his, his state was when he passed away. But when before Tchisa Mesim resurrect, he will turn to dust. Everything turns to dust. Then he's resurrected as a full human being, reinfused with his neshama. So reaching the 49th level is not a contradiction to what why we went there. The impediment of Avram would have been a permanent impediment. That has to do with potential. Because he had that impediment, the potential is minimized. So that had to be corrected. The process was enslavement. But once that's removed, regardless of how far you fall, you wait now, if you come back, you come back fully intact, which was the 49 days until we arrived at Sinai, which was on the 50th day when the Torah was given to us. 
and, and just so, so, so we were on, basically on the knife's edge, meaning if we stayed longer, it would have been the end. Correct. And so we're basically hanging on a precipice, is, is how I'm to understand it. Literally on a hair breath, literally on that. But you go from. You say, but skin of our teeth. But you go from being hugely negative to hugely positive. In a. You know, it's interesting. The morale points out, you know, the concept of, of boomerang. The, the more taught something is, you know, the, the return is even stronger. Because we fell so deep, such a level into the abyss of impurity. When you come from there, the the return was literally. I mean, the Ramchal says something interesting. I mean, the morale. We reached a level there was almost no trace of our spirituality. Let's say we we would have had a greater degree of, of spirituality when we left Egypt. That means that spirituality is tainted spirituality. It's tainted. It was the original spirituality we sunk to a level, and that spirituality is intermingled with this impurity of Egypt. We reach a level, there's, my, almost, there's no trace of that original spirituality. We're at the point of spiritual extinction. Now, a new spirituality begins to develop, which was never tainted with that impurity. This is already a new, the ascent of new, new spirituality, which is coming into being. That's what it is. Because if it would have been part of the old, that means the old spirituality was tainted. So everything's being built on, 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 on um, inferior quality material. And, and just writing this in, the, 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 the inflection point was, it the, was upon the departure or upon the the first plague? In other words, did we... Departure, departure. We had to leave Egypt. As long as we were in Egypt, we were at the 49th level. Regardless of what we saw, what we experienced, our souls were shut down. We were, we were like entombed in this, this impure state of impurity. So, so the plagues and witnessing the plagues and everything else did not was not a foundation laying, so to speak? In terms of our, our spiritual development, it did not touch us. What happened was, it's like you have a, a time-release medication. When we left Egypt, all that, all of a sudden, uh, expanded. You know, the Rabchal writes, you know, when you do a mitzvah, the soul is infused with an energy which is unlimited. So if that's the case, whenever you do a mitzvah, the neshama should be impacted to the point where the neshama advances to an unbelievable level, to a level which is not to be understood. So why doesn't it? So he writes because if the neshama would be affected, impacted to such a degree positively, you know what happens? You have no choice. Of course, the spirituality of the neshama would overtake the physicality of the body and expunge and vaporize whatever impurities inside the body. So what does he do? Hashem suppresses it. It's all potential. And only when the neshama leaves the body and it comes to the world to come, that's where it expands. All your good deeds, your mitzvahs throughout your lifetime, whatever you did, now it's all released. And when it's released, the neshama becomes this mega soul. So until we leave, everything is suppressed. It's all suppressed because we're in our physicality. Because it wouldn't be suppressed, there's no physicality. The physicality is, is spiritualized to a point, it becomes a spiritual entity. When the neshama leaves the body, it's no longer in that suppressed state, then it expands to this level, which it's not, it's unfathomable what level that is.